Hey, welcome to JK News. Steve Green here, uh, the Ice Man. People call me Ice Man. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I do. I'm moving. I got and he's wearing the ice. I'm moving up in the world. Got I got 30 G's around my neck. Let's talk about oil prices today, baby. Does this cause melted ice? Yeah. No. Oh. oh. It's liquid ice. You know why? Because it was never ice. Are you sure? It was only bottled at room temp. It came from the mountains of Hukasaka. Hukasaka. Hukasaka gets cold. Okay, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Okay, so who knows about the, how oil just went? Uh, the price of oil per barrel just went so low that it crashed under zero per barrel. What it's negative. Negative. Far in the negative now. You're talking about it's only canola? getting more negative. Not canola oil and not vegetable oil. Some people are going to get confused. <laughs> uh, yeah. We're talking about crude. Of, We're talking about crude oil. Oh. So can we can we go to the gas station and get money back for pumping yeah. gas? For, for, yeah, yeah. What? Well, How the, does that work? It's because it's negative. Oil, when they negative. call it the price of oil, is the future price of oil. Correct. What so it's not mean? the current price because they set prices for what they will buy it for or sell it for next month. What they speculate on, what it, what, what yeah. the price will be so based on supply and demand and where, where they see it. So um, it's not the actual price, it's based off of a price that you promise to pay for later. Is this the yeah. Jewish concept? It. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people think the Jews are behind all of it. So I disagree with that. Wait, so does that mean that in a month from now, we're gonna get paid for pumping gas? Like, how does that work? Well, it's no. crude oil, to, <laughs> and so there's a That's difference so between the gas station oil and crude oil. The crude oil is just the oil that's raw that gets pulled out of the ground. Where does gasoline come from? Just like, when do I get my check? They need to refine it. <laughs> yeah, just so, fast so forward to when they get paid. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. with an electric car. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> They are they they are paying people to take the oil off of their hands because it's more Who's costly for it? them to hold the oil. So if you have space, if you're willing to just take this container ship full of fucking millions of barrels or whatever, right? It's like I saw one where it was like it it, it, it cost two hundred fifty thousand dollars a day to like store this oil. Wow. Why? Yeah. Why? Like, like, like so what are they doing? Well, they're shipping. they're yeah they're movers essentially, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like the person who. Gets makes the oil. It's not the same person who sells the oil to the people who receive it. It's a, a middleman. Mm -hmm. so the middleman buys the oil, and now the oil is coming, and he's like, "Fuck, there's too much oil." He wants oil, yeah. and all of the reserves are all full, yeah. and every storage oh. is full. What do I do with it? And the price kept dropping down, and no one was buying. I mean, when's the last time you got a tank of gas? Anybody? A good year. Last week. A month ago. <laughs> yeah, a month ago. Honestly, yeah. same. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. So I drive a Jeep. So. A lot of people are in that boat where they don't need to buy gas right now. And so oil has crashed and crashed and crashed. And then uh, Russia and the Saudis were in a war over who's going to. Well, like, so this is, this is what's happening because yeah. there's this whole surplus of oil. Now everyone's acting like Walmart in a way where it's like, I'm going to price you out the business. Yes. Because right now there's, o there's only a handful of oil producing nations, right? You have uh, Saudi Arabia or the Middle East, and then you have Russia, you have us. China. And then you have uh, uh, Canada. No, I don't think China produces well, as- Well, they have the oil contracts in Iraq. So they're buying them. Yeah. Oh, but, that, that. but I'm talking about producers, right? Right. And then for each group that I just mentioned, like they produce oil at different cost. So for example, in the US, I think we're somewhere around $25 a barrel or Canada, or maybe even Russia is around 20, but Saudi Arabia, they can produce it for 10 bucks a barrel. So they can outprice everybody and say, well, we'll just produce more, flood the fucking market, price you out of the business, and then we'll come in and we'll be the only ones that anyone can buy oil. And then Russia said, okay, we're not gonna, we're pretending like that's not that scary and we're gonna keep producing barrels of oil. And then that's why Saudi, the Saudis were overproducing, Russia was overproducing, yep. Yep. while nobody was You're buying. You're doing the Cold War instead of nuclear arms. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the Cold War. Talking about beforehand, and uh, the, essentially in the Middle East, they have a cartel of oil businesses. And uh, when something like this happens, where there's a lot less demand, what they're supposed to do is dial back how much oil to produce so they can bring up the price again, right? The problem is that there's so many different factions, right? They're like, oh yeah, we'll totally do that. We'll totally we'll do that. And then, but then they're like, okay, you dial it back, but then we'll keep producing it. And then when everything goes back up, we'll have a shit ton and you guys will have less. But the problem is that they're all thinking that, so then they're, none of them are dialing it back. <laughs> they're all like, yeah, we'll promise, yeah, we'll and promise. Then, and yeah, and then, so then Saudi Arabia is just bringing it up and then Russia is like, fuck you, we're not gonna back down. And all of a sudden, no one was backing out, yep. down. Yep. And that's what made the oil like uh, crash the market. 
Here's another right. conspiracy though, is that China's out here saying, yes, free oil, because then they can store the fuck out of this stuff. And so are we. Yep. <laughs> the US strategic oil reserve is getting, re is getting fulfilled through this at a crazy cheap price because of the same reason. Apparently making money from taking oil too. Precisely. There's so many moving pieces to it though, it's way, it's still complicated and I don't even know everything. What I find hilarious though, is that the, is the idea, not the reality, because me and Joe have been doing live shows a couple nights and we found out, I mean, I, I actually was Googling this prior, but it's so funny because we found out on the show from some cool fans that you cannot buy oil for under like the dollar thing. Like, like the fact that it went like, under we zero. We can't buy barrels of oil. Oh, even if we want to, because we were thinking, where can we get barrels of crude oil? Can we just store it in our backyard? Like how sick would it be if right? we became fucking oil barons yeah. during this whole situation? And how fun would it be if you're like at a cocktail party somewhere and you're like, yeah, I think 9-11 was an inside job. Also, I'm an oil baron. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be an oil Those baron. Mines explode. Yeah. <laughs> People would fucking lose their mind. A mom. tycoon? Right. Is it because you guys don't have the proper licenses or something? Or you just don't know the right people to buy yeah, these? Well, right. there's no, so how are you gonna get to you? You have to spend yeah, so much right. fucking money to bring those oil ba uh, barrels to your place. And there's regulations like right. storing uh, the toxic and shit like that. Like you can't just leave it in your backyard. It's kind of like the, the, you know how the milk producers recently were dumping all of the milk that they, they what? yeah. Gallons and gallons, hundreds of gallons of milk, right? Why? Because, well, the milk was supposed to go towards schools, towards restaurants, and none of them were open. Uh, so the milk producers are just dumping it into the, into the dirt. Uh, and you can't do that with oil. So what are you gonna do with it? You can't just dump it out because right. you have too much. So now you're just paying people to get all What about hands. dumping in the ocean? That's what a lot of people <laughs> yeah. do. Well, you're not BP, so. Oh. Put it in the rivers or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God. So that's what's wild about this whole situation is that the the, so a lot of the conspiracy, a lot of conspiracy land is that um, oil uh, has driven most of our um, foreign policy in the past like 40, 50 years, which really isn't that much of a conspiracy if you think about it. So the idea is that the fact that there's no demand for it now mm -hmm. is the most ironic thing maybe ever. Yeah. That they did all that posturing, all that fighting, all that bloodshed, thousands of Americans <laughs> dead in so many countries, and now it's like Isn't nobody that, wants oil like, anyway. 9-11 tied to it somehow or something? Well, that's the, that's the, the uh, right. So the idea behind that is that um, we went into these countries because of oil, because Iraq has oil, oil, fuck tons of oil, and we went in there and then, and then what's so funny is that we all convinced ourselves that America went into Iraq to give democracy to the Iraqi people. We went there to free them from all this shit. But really, we got there and then our politicians sold the oil contracts to China. Why? A lot of those people have also been busted, like, like uh, Diane Feinstein in California, for having mm -hmm. Chinese spies under their employ. Mm -hmm. she, she had a driver for 35 years who was like a fucking Chinese spy who was reporting she to China. She wasn't careful. Right, I mean, so who knows how much influence our politicians have had with China over the years. So the idea that we have had this independent democracy and China does their thing and we're at war with each other no. is probably bullshit because we, got, we get heavily influenced by Chinese money. Chinese money, Saudi Arabian money, yep. different lobbyist groups, yep. different interest groups. And when people say, what are these interest groups? It's usually corporations that have a special interest. That's why they're called special interest group. So like, let's say you are a bunch of oil companies and you want easier regulations because you're spending millions of dollars every fucking year because some guy has to come in and check off some shit yep. on a clipboard yep. because you know you, you might just get some pelicans to die or whatever and that's why we rail off all the time about corporatist capitalism crony capitalism and not actual capitalism because we don't have that here like we have a crony capitalist system right. where the people at the top are literally paid off and it goes all the way down the chain. And it depends, it's not always the same people. So let's say uh, sometimes it's oil interests, sometimes it's tobacco, sometimes it's nations like China, sometimes it's uh, nations with special interests or corporations from other countries like maybe Europe or whatever. Let's say there's a special interest group uh, in the automobile industry, Germany maybe, and BMW, Mercedes, Volkswagen, all those guys come in and then they'll pay our politicians that'll make laws in favor of their car companies 
stuff like that. And then, and then they, they'll sell out our car companies or whatever. And then yeah. when they cash out of Congress, they leave multi, multi, multi millionaires and yep. the math makes no sense. They made a couple hundred grand shady. a year. It makes, it's like, what? So shady. They were Good job to, investing, guys. They were trying guys. to stop that. Uh, I think Ron Paul was one of the guys, but they tried to stop uh, that after you, you're a career politician, that there's a limit of five to 10 years or something after leaving office, you can't have a corporate job. And I think that's right. genius. Yeah, it is. And it should be it should be within everything because these guys leave defense contractors within our are they they leave the defense department they join defense contractors yeah. like Raytheon yeah and and so all these corporate interests get served by our government interests and they all are actually just working together in collaboration the whole time that's the jig yep. That's the, and that's the military industrial complex. Everyone likes to make fun of that and say like, oh, Alex Jones says that a lot, so that's silly. But if you actually look at it, the military industrial complex is the realest shit maybe ever, yep. like ever exposed by a president of the United States. Eisenhower said it, it got carried forward by JFK. And then Trump actually just accidentally said, yeah, I think there's a military industrial complex. <laughs> How did he actually accidentally Dude, he say that? He is so funny because I think he doesn't know what to no. hold back. And sometimes all he just cares about is himself. So yeah. he'll say some shit. His ego's so big. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I know the secrets you guys don't fucking know. Right. right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, what secrets? Right. I know, but you don't. Right. And so he'll sit there, and I saw him on a Fox News interview say, I think the military industrial complex is like, no, I think that's like a thing. It's like a thing, you know? Because <laughs> he's like, I try to pull troops out, and he's like, they and then a bunch of they won't let me. They say, you can't do that. And I'm like, okay, okay, well. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> Which is so fascinating because it's like, wait, you're the president. You are the buck stops with you apparently. But but then we all know that the intelligence apparatus, those guys, they last for 25, 30 years yeah. each. They yeah. go across multiple administrations. They all agree on the same fucking policies. So we live in a fucking. It, 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 we might as well be a third world country, you know, the United States of America, because what our people get, the people at the bottom and the middle class. What they get is fucked, right? And then the people at the top and in Congress and who are uh, connected to the oligarchs of our country, they all get all the sick riches and all the cool shit. So that's why you have people on cable news who get paid six salaries to tell you why um, uh, the government is right about whatever is going on. Mm -hmm. Or why the government, you shouldn't really listen to the government right now because Trump is in charge, but ultimately we're gonna support his entire agenda because that's part of our agenda. Mm -hmm. So. We have a neo-conservative and neo-liberal elite that are running the country, and then the rest of us are just sort of fucked underneath it. Which is why you all got $1,200 to last you six months, and you're not supposed <laughs> to bitch about anything, yeah. because you got $1,200, so what are you bitching about? While well, Wall Street got bailed out. And they don't give usual. a fuck if people are suffering. No. They don't give a fuck. And they know they're never going to jail for anything, yeah. because that's what happened last time during the housing crisis. Nobody goes to jail at the top. The CEOs don't go to jail. Nobody fucking pays. But so how can we take advantage of this oil crisis? Right. You can invest into oil companies, but you got to figure out which ones will be bailed out and which ones are going to be destro like destroyed. So take your $1,200 Trump buck check and play whack-a-mole. I sure hope you get the right oil company. Damn. <laughs> it's bleak. Like George Collins said, it's a big fucking... Uh, a, a party and you're not, not in it. it. Yep.